Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna play with elegant writer pens. These are a calligraphy pen. They come in different size nibs. I've got um, 2.0 millimeter, which is the fine nib, the 2.5 millimeter, which is the medium, and the uh, three millimeter, which is the bold. I actually have two 2.0 ones. I think because I had probably one, and then I saw a really cool video, this is a long time ago, by uh, Carlin Holman, who I think, pioneered this technique. Now these are calligraphy pens, but she was doing some really amazing artwork with them. And so I'm pretty sure I ran out and bought a pack. <laughs> so um, that's why I have two of the 2.0 ones. Um, and you can look her up. There's a great video on Cheap Joe's Art Stuff Web's uh, YouTube channel that shows some techniques. But I was playing around with that today. <clears throat> and, I, and I sketched these little tiger heads and just added water to them. And I also sketched this little scene of a fisherwoman in Vietnam, and uh, that photo's from Unsplash, and I thought that would be a really fun sketch to do together. So I'm just gonna find a clean page in my sketchbook, and we're gonna do that. And we'll use the, all the different pens. And all you'll need is um, an elegant writer pen. You don't need different sizes. One will do the trick. These are like $2.09 at Blick, or if you buy them in bulk, they're like $1.79, or you can get a pack of four for about $8. A couple bucks more on Amazon, um, so I mean, not expensive. So definitely worth checking out. I know, like, uh, I think I got mine at AC Moore. Of course, they're no longer in business, but I bet whatever you have for a craft store will have them. And I'm just gonna grab my reference photo here, which I downloaded from Unsplash, and we are gonna have a look at this. And yeah, I just, I love the shapes here and I love the, um, I mean, there's some different value tones and yeah, I thought this was just a, a fun one to draw. And I'm gonna put this over so we can keep that on screen so you can see it. Hopefully that doesn't slide away on me too badly. And it doesn't matter what size you, you get. I've got the medium size one here. We're gonna, I'm gonna start with the hat because I think that's the easiest, the easiest shape. We're just gonna do a triangle. Now the hat is fairly light, so I don't wanna put too much ink down. It's got a little bit of a curved bottom here. I think part of what I like about this is that you get a, um, because it's a calligraphy nib, it's like that, uh, it's got that, that flat edge, um, you get some really strange, uh, strange marks. So then coming off the hat, we're gonna have the back of their coat kind of curving around. She's kind of squatted down on the, on the ground. We got her shoulder up here. I love the, the way the fabric looked on my illustrations. So I'm just gonna get those uh, fabric-y lines in. Now, I did zoom in on the photo because I could see that there is, um, I don't have her gesture quite right. She's gonna tip over the way that I have her drawn. I think the hat needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, get the leg here and she's, looks like she has some sort of gloves or mittens on and there's actually like a little basket here where she's probably, I would imagine, um, or maybe um, digging for clams or something. I feel like I have her gonna tip over here. I'm gonna bring that back a little bit more. And then she's got, uh, looks like a bag tied around her waist, mesh bag. She's got a, um, a, looks like a, just a, mesh basket. And in the basket there is, oh, it looks like a stick. Maybe it's a shovel. It's probably a shovel, probably the end of a shovel. Can't really see it through the mesh. But all of these black lines, if you, when we activate them, they are gonna make quite a bit of, of color. So it's something that we'll want to be aware of. And there's all these rocks and um, things kind of in the landscape and going out into the sea. Looks kind of like a, um, 
like a little peninsula maybe, like a little bay. I live in Maine and, and people do go out to like the brackish water and dig clams. I can see there's like a, a pier over here, building that's up on stilts. So it must be low tide. Well, that would make sense if she's out digging um, mussels or clams or something at low tide. I feel like I have very lopsided buildings here. <laughs> That's all right. I've got the tree way up here. And it's fairly dark over there, so I'm thinking I probably should do something over there to make it a little bit darker. It looks like there might be just some more, more piers, more... more buildings, just more depth there. The water is also a little bit dark. Now she's got a bit of a scarf on her face it looks like. I kind of liked, I had thought when I first saw her, because I didn't blow up the picture, I thought it was hair. And I liked the look of the hair, but let's zoom in a little bit and see. Um, she's got a scarf. She's got a scarf on. I think I might switch to that smaller pen. I'm having a hard time to find a edge of the of the pen to draw with. Um, so I thought that she kind of had uh, like hair kind of. I, I actually like that. I like the, the, the hair and the breeze look. So I'm going to change that on mine. You don't have to do that. You can do it however you want. Got a little bit of a... I don't feel like I have her the gesture. I don't have her bent forward enough, but it's going to have to be what it is at this stage of the game, I think, because we're working in pen and she seems to have kind of like a, I bet it's kind of like a rubber glove type situation, probably to keep her sleeves dry so she doesn't get too cold while she's out working. And just see the little lip of her basket there. I'm going to have a little bit more of it revealed because it's, um, I don't know, I think it tells part of the story and you can't really see too much of it. Obviously, the photographer wasn't asking this woman to pose. He just um, grabbed the picture and so... I really like the um, different textures. I'm, I'm wondering what's tied to her... Uh, to her... her thing there. Is it, is it, a, it looks like maybe a towel, maybe a towel rolled up or something. And then she's got something in here too. It looks the same, like attached to her. Maybe it is like a little, a little towel. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a fisher person. These mossy rocks, though, they're very, uh, they're very homey to me because I like to go down to the coast and spent a lot of time on the brackish water with my kids when they were little. And the Penobscot um, Bay, the Bay to the Ocean. I think I like it. I like it when we have things that kind of cross the horizon. So maybe I should bring that water line down a little bit more. Now the water would be darker if you squint and look at this. The water is going to be darker than. Um, well, you know, her, the shadows on her on her body are actually pretty dark. I almost feel like I would want to bring some more dark back there just to show that she really is on the water. I think what I like about this is how quickly you can work. I'm going to put some shingles on the roof there. These dilute so well that um, that there's not going to be a lot of line left over if you don't if you don't want it to be. And you can go back in with a stamp with the pens and get darker areas too if you want to. 
Put that little tracker there. All right, and I don't know how old these are, but you know they're going to be juicier, obviously, if they're new. So I'm going to start off with a flat, and I'm going to start back here, top of the paper. I don't care if this smooshes out a ton because that's background. Oh, I should, probably should have clipped this down. This paper does like to curve a lot and get right in there and liquefy that edge. The sun's hitting her back, so I will want to get that um, get that water to pull out. Once you do wet it, though, it's hard to it doesn't react. Once you've you've wet it and you've got it to blend out. Um, it doesn't like to re-wet again, so if you want to add water later, you could do a um, watercolor later, you could go over it and not totally get everything over, you know, reactivated again. So that's kind of nice as long as you touched it with water once, kind of like Ink Tense does that. Got a big puddle there. I also want to go through that basket a bit. Go under the pier because you would see you'd probably see water through there. That was a tree, but then I just kind of crapped out on the tree. Let's just, uh, I just want to give a hint of that. I don't really want to put a ton of detail back there. Um, I think I'll head over to the rocks now, our mossy rocks. You can scribble it onto a palette and then add it, add more in as well. I don't know if that's really that effective, to be honest, but like if you wanted to put in some really dark shapes, you can do that. I think the most effective way is to go back in with the pen on top of it. We can start to see the colors splitting apart and you get the, the bits of pink and red and uh, bits of pink and green. I think that's really pretty. Like if I was going to add color, probably add red to her baskets, but I don't know if I would add much more than that. kind of all monotone now. I probably should have been a little bit more judicious. I'm going to go with the 3.0, that's the bold, and I'm going to add some shadows into some of these rocks. I don't know if this is um, recommended behavior or not. It doesn't seem to mess up the pens. And it does seem to keep leaching the ink out. Or the ink seems to keep coming out, so I think it's all right. I just want to get some of those darker value contrasts here up front where we have... Uh, we have those dark, really strong contrasts. Those lines aren't gonna move out as so much because I went on wet paper. Anytime you do something on wet paper, you don't it does, things don't liquefy quite as well. I might be overdoing it on this one. It's so funny. Sometimes you you hit something just right, and then uh, you go to try to repeat it in like a lesson or something and then it's I you can't you can't recapture the magic it's like oh I this is not as good as the first one I did now I want to make sure that I don't completely make her too dark I want the folds in the fabric but I don't want to get her her back really dark I, the front can be dark this side can be dark. You can blot. Let me 
picture of a paper towel. A relatively get a blot quick, and when you blot, you get more of a pink. You could go back in with white ink if you wanted to, um, to to uh, highlight later. But I think it looks great if you don't like if you if you can just kind of keep to that abstraction kind of keep to that uh, keep to that spontaneous look there. All right, I don't have the value contrast that I need. So I am going to, like I got, I probably got a little too dark. So I'm gonna go in any place that I think it could be a little bit darker. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. I feel like it can be darker here where the arm and the back are connecting. What size is this? This is a 2.5. Maybe I'll go into the smaller one. And this net, it's kind of netted bag or whatever that she's got around her waist. I like that shape. I like how it looks like it's wrapped around her. That's what I, it's, that looks good, I think. Yeah, her pants are really, really dark. I actually suppose it could be a skirt that's kind of wrapped around. I think it's pants. I think it's pants and she's got this, uh, these gloves that have a pattern on them. I love the folds. I love folds and fabric. A little bit of a you know, the warp. What do you call that? The warp and the weft of of fabric. Does do hats have that? It's kind of this straw hat that you can see the. Uh, the weave pattern in. My choice to do the head make that hair instead of instead of a scarf. There is stuff in the basket here. We can't really tell what, but it's just kind of like darker there. water to that. Now the first sketch I did, I did in 11 minutes and I don't, I don't think this one necessarily is any better than that first one, but I think trying to, I'm so much slower when I try to explain what I'm doing. It's also kind of hard to stay in the zone, but I mean, this is fun. And it's just a $2 pen, you know, it's not like, you don't, you don't need to have more than one. It's nothing fancy. I think that's what I really love about it. It's, it's accessible. 
and there's so many options you know you can add color to it or you can just leave it the black and white I'm gonna add just a little bit of color back here maybe blot it to give it that more of a pink tone if that works oh it does work that's crazy blot it and you get more pink that's fun but there you have it, a little demo with the Elegant Writer. Um, if it was too fast for you to sketch along, you can always watch it back and pause. Um, I will link to this photo that is up from Unsplash. I'll turn it around here so you can see it. But I just love that, that gesture. I think that looks great. Gesture I did not get right there. I think I did it better the first time. I'll compare, we'll see the first one. You can tell me which one you like better in the comments below. So that's the one I just did. And this is the one I did earlier. I definitely feel like I got the shape better. But I got, maybe got a little bit more complex in my shading there. I don't know. I think I like the first one better, to be honest. But, um, but there you have it. I hope you enjoy it. And hey, try some animals too. Maybe I'll post the video for that. I just, just did some quick sketches. Um, you know, I wasn't really... I was just playing around. And uh, it's fun to do that sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.